Hello and welcome to today's webinar uh, where we will uh, show you how Hot Docs can help you to generate documents easily in multiple languages. Uh, my name is Greg Duncan, I'm the Senior Marketing Manager here at Hot Docs. Uh, you will see a, a panel on the right hand side of your screen where you can ask questions throughout this session um, and we will take all the questions at the end. So feel free um, as we're going through the slides to ask any questions that you may feel um, you would like answered uh, on the completion of the today's webinar. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to uh, today's presenter, my colleague Seth Hanasek. Uh, Seth is an expert in hot docs. Uh, he's, as you can see, he's worked with the product for almost 20 years and he works closely with uh, a number of our clients in different verticals to help them maximize the value from hot docs. So uh, Seth, I'll now hand over to you to, to take everyone through the slides. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, the, uh, the presentation, uh, we've got a number of different uh, audience members. You have some people who are new to hot docs and people who are experienced with hot docs. So some of this, um, some of this information um, may be familiar to some of you. Um, but uh, when working with documents in, in multiple languages, there are a number of different challenges um, that are both specific to multi-language templates, but also generally um, challenges that need to be addressed um, and can be addressed through automation. So uh, some of the specific challenges you have with multi-language documents, documents that need to support um, English and um, you know, any number of other languages, including European languages, um, Asian languages, characters that have, uh, uh, languages that have special characters in them, different alphabets, um, that read in different directions. Um, that can include things like um, regional legal terminology um, and the technicalities that arise from managing those different um, um, terminologies uh, based on that region. Um, obviously, incorrect phrasing um, and formatting of information can cause significant risks in legal documentation. Um, small errors can have very large consequences. Um, when you're dealing with um, multiple versions of any kind of document, uh, particularly multiple versions of a document in different languages, there are a lot of time constraints um, uh, with the amount of time used to both create and maintain all of those different versions and keep changes in line across all of them, particularly in the legal environment. And of course, uh, there's the issue of, of, of making sure that you're keeping your branding, your messaging, um, the look and the feel of your documents and the presentation consistent uh, and professional amongst all of these other changes. And uh, all of this stuff can be boiled down to the concept of, of, um, of risk. So uh, the ways in which uh, Hot Docs addresses this, um, specific or, or generally I should say, is through the use of Hot Docs templates. So the content author will take those documents um, in their native format and they'll turn them into Hot Docs templates. Uh, defining all the changeable parts of those templates, uh, including both individual questions and their placement in, and their an the placement of the answers in the document, as well as identifying changeable uh, parts of the document, sentences, clauses, pages, et cetera, and all of the business rules around it. Um, and then all of that stuff gets consumed by the user. So the user takes that template and um, the template's delivered to them as a question and answer session. So um, they, uh, they fill in those answers or we can populate those answers from a back-end system if necessary. But once we've gathered that information, we pass it into the, into the generation engine to produce the documents that are necessary with all the right formatting and language. Uh, and of course, we also capture all that data um, and that can be used um, to recreate any documents that are necessary. But the template itself um, and the interview are where the, the languages intersect and there are, uh, um, there are uh, needs that we have to maintain um, all of the specific changes, uh, particularly the ones that are specific to a particular language in both template and in the way that the questions are presented to the user and the way we accept the answers from them. And all of this stuff can be um, put under this, this umbrella of risk. We wanna take the, the risk of producing documents and reduce it. We wanna, we wanna minimize the amount of risk as much as possible. Um, so we 
we want to provide tools and can and do provide tools um, that allow you to address these kind of things uh, as as and when they're necessary. So uh, generally speaking, we want to reduce the opportunity for human error. We want to check the information the user's entering and you know um, ensure that it's difficult for them to do incorrectly. And we want to make it easier for them to fill in the right kinds of information. Um, so we also want to enforce any rules. So if there's um, specific limitations on the types of questions that um, that are asked, uh, if there are you know ranges within values, if there are mutually exclusive options, um, necessary questions that follow on from previous questions, we want to be able to define all of those things. And of course, we want the whole application to be easy for the user. Um, we want them to uh, come to it with an intuitive experience so that what they get makes sense to them um, in, a, in a general way, but also in the very specific way that, that um, it speaks their language quite literally. Um, we also have tools to help um, ease the compliance question. Um, so we can provide um, the ability to uh, optionally insert clauses based on particular rules. Um, we can format particular questions and answers so that they're presented in the right way, in the right circumstances. Um, and of course, we do all of this within a Word environment so that we can retain um, all of the fidelity of your source documentation that's already built um, typically in a Word environment. Um, we get to reuse things like logos and headers and footers and styles. We can we can uh, hew very closely to your existing style guides to ensure that um, uh, branding and your corporate messages is uh, retained regardless of the circumstance. Um, we can also provide environments that let us uh, version your output. So when you when you create new versions of these templates um, and upload them into your hub environments, uh, we retain all the old versions and we can roll them back. We can also future publish. So you can give a, uh, a in this example, you can give a live date in the future and say, we want this template to actually um, become live and accessible to the user, this version, on a specific date. So you can, you can anticipate um, legal changes, uh, target deadlines, that kind of thing, and control the user experience so that they're seeing the most correct version of any template that they need to. Um, and of course, once we start versioning templates, we then have the ability to go backwards and forwards through that those versions um, for auditing purposes or to roll back to a previous version in case there's uh, been some kind of error. So we can we can uh, maintain the best environment for a user possible uh, when we're presenting them with templates of any kind. Um, one of the most one of the one of the issues that's very particular to um, multi-language templates and just regional templates in general is the presentation of common items like dates and numbers. And Hotbox offers automatic translation of dates and numbers in a number of different um, common European languages. Um, we, can, we can automatically format dates, um, translating things like the months. Uh, we can translate numbers into text in a number of different native languages. But even the languages that we don't support natively, uh, we provide tools for that allow us to um, create translations for dates and numbers and indeed a number of other specific language uh, needs with virtually any language. Um, we've had proven successes uh, in templates using Arabic, Chinese, and Russian, um, which are notoriously uh, difficult languages to wrangle. Uh, but Hotdocs has an environment that is conducive uh, and flexible enough uh, that will allow uh, you to uh, use the tools that are at hand, but also to build new tools if that's necessary. Um, so we can take things like uh, this date, for instance, it's gathered in the interview and present it in a number of different formats um, and also translate parts of it as required in the templates without the user having to do um, anything specific during the interview. You can do that kind of stuff automatically. Um, we want to provide the user with the ability to gain better control uh, over their templates. Um, control obviously is um, controlling documentation becomes more challenging as the number of templates that they use across uh, a larger number of regions 
um, and specified areas increases. Um, one of the advantages of deploying templates using hot docs is that that can be done centrally. Um, so you can have an individual um, hub that contains all of your template content that's delivered to the relevant region. Um, and in fact, you can have a, a single template that delivers in multiple languages simultaneously and can provide different interview experiences to the user based on their selected language. Um, so we can show, um, for instance, things like dynamic prompts. I'll show a very quick example of that in a moment. Um, we have um, the issue of branding obviously comes up. There's a lot of uh, effort involved, uh, a lot of investment in making sure that branding and corporate messaging is consistent and professional and accurate uh, wherever possible. And uh, by using standardized templates and providing users with tools that essentially don't require them to manage branding and messaging, um, you can maintain that consistency a lot more easily across a larger organization. Um, so there's a number of different tools that Hotdocs provides in this environment uh, that allow us to do this. And we've had success with a number of different companies. Um, for instance, uh, JNT Bank, uh, needed to standardize their lending documents, which is not an uncommon need. Um, they wanted to achieve accuracy using their wording and branding. Um, they, would, they found that very difficult using plain word templates. Um, they converted these into hot docs templates, um, producing documents in uh, Czech, Slovakian, Bulgarian, English, Russian, and Polish simultaneously. Um, and they've been able to half the time that it takes to produce their documentation with much, much higher levels of accuracy. Um, and that translates directly into improved customer service, customer loyalty, et cetera. Um, so they, they went through a large streamlining process for their all of their lending documentation, which has um, given them a lot of positive value um, in a number of different languages. Uh, simultaneously. Um, so they produced uh, templates that have clauses that are specific to particular languages and allow, the user is actually allowed to select the language at the point of assembly. So it's not even that they need to um, pick a template that is in a particular language. The template itself contains the logic that determines the language and they're answering a single set of, of questions which are then being uh, used in the right context and then reformatted or adjusted dynamically using hot docs. Um, we've also uh, completed a project with uh, a global bank that has 4,000 offices in 70 countries, very large, um, well-known if I was allowed to mention their name. Um, but they were using, uh, they had very, very complicated and, um, and inconsistent methods of creating and updating templates um, using, you know, the, the kinds of systems that most people are comfortable with to use all, every day, but it was done in a very ad hoc manner. So there were sharing drives, you know, copying, pasting, moving things around, doing searching and replacing. But that kind of process without any control in it is very inaccurate. It creates um, documents that are inconsistent, that are error prone. Um, and obviously that translates very badly in the business uh, model. So they, uh, they're an international bank. They needed support for documents that could be used in any country around the world. Um, so we set up a hot doc system for them. Um, they have a team of hot docs developers. Um, and now they are using hot docs in, uh, <coughs> excuse me, in a, a number of different uh, regions in the world, uh, in uh, the Middle East and North Africa, in China. Um, they've got they were able to consolidate 24 separate documents into a single regional facility letter um, that can be deployed to any number of uh, areas simultaneously. And uh, this saved them up to $10 million a year, which is not an inconsiderate sum. So uh, with that bit of background um, and scene setting, uh, I'd like to move into a quick demonstration of how some of the, some of the tools that Hot Docs can use to address the issue of multiple languages um, in a template. Uh, and there's my reminder that we are in a webinar. So um, most uh, existing customers that we have are using Hotdocs Developer. Um, and the tools that I'm about to describe are also available uh, in the newest offering from uh, Hotdocs, which is known as Hotdocs Author. 
um, but I'm going to I'm going to go through the specifics in the developer environment um, to provide uh, the best value to our existing customers. Uh, but the principles are the same regardless of which environment that you're working in. So this template that I have here is an example of an HR registration document. This is basically an employment contract uh, that is in German and English simultaneously. Um, so if I edit this template, um, this is this is the the Hotbox development environment. We work directly in Word. Um, there's a series of uh, buttons up here to give us access to things, but we have um, Hotbox fields, and these just represent placeholders for Hotbox instructions. Uh, typically, things like variables. So we'll ask a question about uh, the notary name, and then their name will be placed in this in this field. Uh, but we are using heavily this language instruction. Uh, the language instruction is accessible in Hotdocs through the other field uh, button in the toolbar. And the other field lets us create a language field. And the languages that Hotdocs supports using this field are listed here. Um, they're just common um, European languages. Um, and this language instruction very specifically allows us to do dynamic translation and formatting of number and date formats. So uh, if the template that you're using <clears throat> Pardon me. If the template that you're automating uses any of these languages, you can take advantage of this instruction to get access to formats for uh, dates and for numbers. So here we have the date of the shareholder meeting. Uh, and in the English portion of the document, we're simply placing that date in, in the default format in which it's asked. Um, because this is the software is, is English based, we kind of fall back to English as the as the as the default language, but um, we can apply a German format to the same data in the corresponding German translated paragraph. Um, but if we give it a German translated format, this language instruction will know how to translate this format so that when we assemble the template, it will ask this question one time, it'll ask the date question one time, but it'll place the answer here in English and here in German. And it will do that for dates and for number variables. Um, so you'll notice the language instruction has these settings, which are available for the thousands and decimal separators. Um, because in Germany and in a number of different European uh, countries, numbers are formatted in, in the reverse way that they are in um, the uh, main English speaking countries in America and in Britain and in a lot of other English speaking countries, we use uh, a comma for the thousand separator of a number and a decimal point for the decimal separator. But in Germany and again in a number of other European uh, countries, they reverse those sim the use of those symbols. So a German uh, number would use a decimal for the thousand separator and a comma at the decimal place. So uh, you can define what those characters are for any specific chosen language and it will allow you to create number formats that use those uh, symbols. So uh, we have further down. Oh, no, we don't. That's right. Apologies. We can have uh, here. Uh, the nominal value of the shares, um, which we can uh, set up as a number value. And the default format there is the English number format. Um, so it'll, it'll use this format for this number. But of course, we can also get access to the German format, because this section is is um, within the language instruction uh, that's defined as German, we can use the same number variable, but provide it with this German number format. And this question will then place that value in the document formatted with the correct um, thousands and decimal separators. So we test assemble this. Um, 
Uh, I'll explain how the interview is working in a moment. Um, but by default, it displays both languages in the prompts. Um, I can fill in date information, for instance, uh, if I open up some demonstration answers. There we go. So you don't have to watch me type. Uh, there we've got some uh, information about the dates. Uh, if I go into the document preview, here we have the date in English and the date in German. And if I add my new number variable here, if I set that to, let's say, need to allow a couple of decimal places, otherwise we can't illustrate what the decimal places look like. Um, if we take a number variable and give it you know, a, a, a value that displays thousands and decimal separators, and I go into the document, um, actually, in the interview, I can right-click here and jump specifically to that answer. Oh, yes, it is. There it is. Um, so you can see, I zoom in a little bit, it's using the correct characters for the thousands and decimal separators in English, but it's also doing it in German, and we're using a single data point, and that's important. By asking one question, we're limiting the opportunities the user has to enter incorrect information, so we really only need that information one time. We just want to be able to present it in different ways, and Hotbox can do that natively, uh, which is good. So um, we can also deal with things like dynamic prompts. So if I edit uh, the components of this template, uh, each of these fields refers to a hotdoc-specific component, which is stored in this separate component file. Uh, and I can view them side by side. If I look at, um, let's say, the company information dialog, and I look at the the new address variable. Um, whenever we create a question, we're able to set the prompt for that question. And typically the prompt is just some fixed text. But I actually want this prompt to be displayed in either English or in German if the user selects one. So um, I've created what's called a computation. Hotbox has a pretty powerful scripting language in it. Um, and this script allows me to take as an input um, uh, the English, the text of the English prompt I want to use and the text of the German prompt that I want to use. And then output either one of those based on the selected language. So I create a prompt that is both of them by default. It's the English prompt and then some formatting and then the German prompt. And then I check this language question. Which language do you want to use? And once the user answers it, I check which one they've picked. And if they pick English, I output the English prompt. And if it's German, I use the German prompt. By setting the script up in this way, um, I can reuse it in every single variable. So here I've got the company name, um, and here I've got the address. And you can see I'm using the same script, but I'm feeding it the English and German prompts for the company name here, but the new address variable here. And I can use that script in, every, in the prompt of every single question. So that when I assemble the template, um, and I choose a language, if I choose both, then the, the prompts appear in both languages. Uh, but I can choose a particular language, and then the, only the English prompts will be shown, or only the German prompts will be shown based on my selection. And that's not limited to one or two languages. Um, we can do that for any number of languages uh, that might be appropriate. And these prompt fields that are visible here in the interview, um, as well as the fields um, that the user can answer, are fully Unicode compliant. 
So there's no character limitations on what the user can answer in a question or how you may ask that question. Um, I mentioned earlier we've had success using templates in uh, creating templates using um, Chinese, uh, simplified Chinese, uh, Arabic, uh, Russian. Hotbox supports all of those um, languages natively in the interview. You just need to, they're basically just text fields that you can type into using those characters. Um, and that opens up a lot of possibilities for presenting the user with a multi-language interview. And of course, Word itself is Unicode compliant and supports any number of languages. So this, the, the set content inside a Word document can be of any language. Um, we can use that same technique of the prompts to create um, a, specifically the technique of taking some sort of input and then manipulating it using the scripting language to create language specific computations that perform translation tasks. So we can have, for instance, a German translation computation that takes some gendered out, some gendered text and determines the gender of a particular term and then will create the, the appropriate German wording based on the resultant gender. So there are a lot of languages that are, that are highly gendered and we can write scripts that will take inputs and gender that text and output it that way. Um, we can also do translation of other date and number formats that Hotdocs does not support natively. So if we don't, if the language you're using does not appear in that language instruction, um, we still need a way of creating, you know, translated dates or translated numbers. And we can do that using the Hotdoc scripting language as well. Um, so I have an example here of a template uh, that was, uh, I would love to claim as my own, but it was actually developed by one of my colleagues um, that uses a very specific computation that he's written to convert numbers into Russian. So um, this looks pretty complicated and it sort, of is, it sort of is, but what it is doing is relatively straightforward. He takes uh, these instructions and just splits the number up into its individual digits. So if you get a large number, if you get a number like 783, he separates the 78 and the 3 into individual items that he can then manipulate. And then for each digit, he figures out what the Russian translation of that digit in that number would be and outputs that text and then builds up the words for that variable accordingly. Um, and this particular script has a limit of uh, up to a thousand. Um, so he can do a four digit, it can do any three digit number or less, um, but the, the principles involved can be applied to larger and larger numbers if necessary. Um, so if I test assemble this template and I give it a number, um, so I'll do, we'll do 783. Um, if I click this button, that's the output for 783. And at this stage, we do have to take a little bit of this on faith because I don't speak Russian. And if you don't speak Russian either, we will, we will have to trust that he did his translation correctly. Um, I can prove um, that it, provutes, uh, it, it produces different output for each number that you add. Um, but if we go into the document, uh, we can also, he also wrote a script that just runs through that conversion utility for every number between one and a thousand. And that particular computation can be reused in a template anywhere there is any number. It takes a number as its input and its output is the text translation of that number. Um, so that principle, the, 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 the scripting environment in Hotdocs is flexible enough that we can apply that principle to literally any translation task that is necessary. And we can make these reusable translation tools um, that can be used across any number of multi-language templates. Um, so I think that is uh, our time, but we have enough time to answer some questions. Um, this would be the time to do that. Um, uh, thanks for that. <clears throat> Thank you, Seth, uh, for that, that overview. Um, yes, we, we've got some questions here. Uh, thanks for the, the overview. It was uh, quite technical in places. That was uh, trying to strike a balance between our experienced hot docs users on the we today's webinar and some of you that are maybe a bit um, newer to the product so 
Um, we'd be happy to take any questions uh, following this session as well. So the first question I've got here is, does hot dogs work? And I, we've kind of answered it throughout the, the thing, the, uh, the, the session, but does hot dogs work with Mandarin and other character-based languages? That is a very common question. I don't mind addressing it explicitly again. Um, so uh, languages that use, I guess, alternative alphabets, um, alphabets that are not the, 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 the same English alphabet that you and I are, are used to, so things like Cyrillic, traditional Chinese, Arabic, uh, uh, Japanese kanji. Uh, Hot Docs supports all of those characters, so all of the text fields I mentioned, uh, things that are visible in the interview, like prompts and help text, uh, the answer fields the user can type into, and of course, the base Word document itself. All of them are Unicode compliant, and the Unicode standard supports all of those different languages. So there's no problem at all using those language um, characters to develop a hot dogs template. Um, and a, a couple more here that have just come through. So one is, how many documents can you create with hot dogs? Ah, wow. That's... That is almost literally the same question as how long is a piece of string. Uh, how many documents you can create is entirely up to the amount of effort that you'd like to put in. Um, and that, that, that actually is true regardless of how you meant that question. So you can create any number of templates um, using Hot Docs. Once you have a licensed copy of Hot Docs, you can use it just like you can with Word to create any number of documents. Um, but you can also have Hot Docs create any number of documents from a single interview. So you can actually have an interview produce multiple documents from different templates as a kind of automated process. Um, so you could have a single interview that actually put out each languaged version of that template simultaneously. You could have the user fill in one interview and get the English document and the German document and the Chinese document at the same time. And, and we've had a, a separate question here, uh, Seth, which kind of feeds into that theme again. And that's, can you create more than one document at a time? Yes, indeed. So there's a couple of mechanisms in Hot Docs for doing that, but uh, the most fundamental one is just an instruction in Hot Docs called assemble, which is more or less what it sounds like. It just assembles another template after the first one is complete. And you can give it certain um, properties that say, when you assemble this next document, you don't have to ask another interview. And it will just silently pump out all of the assembled documents in a row using all of the same answers. Okay, thanks Seth. That's that's all the questions we've got, but we will be following up this with this session with an email where you can um, register for the recording and also feel free to ask us any additional questions you may have um, and uh, schedule a demo if you would like to see more of the product in detail. Okay, thank you all for your time. Um, this morning or afternoon, depending on where you've tuned in from, and um, thank you again. Thanks, Seth. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.